I want to first go across to our uh, MEA correspondent, Abhishek Jha, who is joining us live. Abhishek, uh, uh, of course, uh, Shinzo Abe played a stellar role in redefining and transforming the India-Japan relationship along with Prime Minister Modi. Just walk us through his contributions to, to, to that end. What did he do to transform the India-Japan relationship over the eight years that he was Prime Minister? Okay, so uh, of course, uh, Shinzo Abe was uh, one of the instrumental of the high India-Japan closer. In the last few years, uh, we have seen that uh, there was overlap uh, premiership between uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, Shinzo Abe of almost six years. During that time, Indian, uh, uh, India and Japan ties actually uh, grew a lot more uh, than, uh, than ever before. Uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure investment came uh, flowing in India. Uh, people to people connect uh, was something that both people tried to explore uh, a lot. Also, uh, strategic and defense architecture was. Uh, Trying to, uh, they, they, they tried to create a different uh, strategic architecture in India, uh, in the Pacific. Uh, and uh, India is now uh, one of the key uh, partners of Quad uh, meeting or Quad grouping, uh, where the summit level talks are happening regularly. Uh, Shinzo Abe was one of the person who was the brain behind this Quad. Also, uh, he had uh, committed bullet uh, training in India, and the, we know that the process of infrastructure development. For that bulletin is, is still on. Uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, Shinzo Abe's personal chemistry was seen in so many meetings at uh, various bilateral uh, summits or multilateral platforms where they always had pull aside meetings. Uh, and Prime Minister Modi and Shinzo Abe would not leave any chance to meet and discuss about the global issue and the regional issues uh, of importance. Uh, we have seen pictures of him uh, with Prime Minister Modi in Sabarmati Ashram, uh, where he was. Uh, uh, staining that charkha uh, and or uh, bait in uh, Banaras where he was uh, totally dressed in Indian attire and uh, uh, soaking in the beautiful sight of the Ganga RC with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. These were the glimpses of uh, past, uh, the memory that will remain with us. Uh, and these were the actually uh, milestone or landmark movement which not only brought uh, these two leaders closer but also uh, derived India and Japan ties uh, at a newer uh, height. Okay, Abhishek, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. We're also awaiting uh, a speech by the Prime Minister at the first Arun Jaitley lecture. The lecture will, of course, be given by Mr. S. Dharman, uh, senior leader from Singapore. But the Prime Minister is also expected to make some comments there. And maybe he might even touch upon uh, his friend, Abe San, Shinzo Abe. Of course, uh, the Japanese Prime Minister who visited India the most uh, as Prime Minister and otherwise. I think he visited three times uh, India and of course his contribution to transforming India-Japan ties uh, is legendary. Let me also go across to former diplomat uh, Prabhu Deyal who's joining us. Uh, I want to spend some time on two aspects that uh, define Shinzo Abe. One is the economic, Abenomics as we now know it, and the other of course uh, redefining uh, Japan's security, defense and foreign affairs architecture as it were. Uh, let's start with that. Uh, how, how will Shinzo Abe be remembered for the way he transformed Japan's posture when it comes to some of these defining issues, Indo-Pacific, Quad, taking on an aggressive China, etc.? I think uh, Shinzo Abe will occupy a unique place in this context. There is no doubt that as far as Quad is concerned, rejuvenating it and bringing it to life was something that Shinzo Abe has to be credited with doing. Uh, significantly, he attached a lot of importance to India in the global context. And that is why Quad was conceived of by Shinzo Abe as being not just an alliance of four important global democracies, but also democracies which are going to matter not just in the short, but also in the long term. So I repeat, he attached a considerable importance to the Japanese-India relationship and gave India a place of great importance in Japanese strategic thinking. Now, Abhishek Jha, very rightly summed up the contours of uh, the Indo-Japanese relationship. Uh, let me mention that 
not only was there great warmth displayed by Abe towards Prime Minister Modi and vice versa, but they also concretized this warmth into a summit level interaction between the two countries, which took place annually. We all know that a lot was achieved every year at the summit level meetings between Prime Minister Modi on one hand and Shinzo Abe on the other. Equally important is the fact that the two prime ministers were able to put in place several institutional dialogue mechanisms. And due to these mechanisms, high level meetings are held regularly at senior official and functional levels. Okay. To exchange views on bilateral issues as well as regional and international cooperation. So in other words, they were able to make the relationship filter downwards in the establishment and were able to put in place mechanisms for continuous dialogue, which is very, very important for sustaining a relationship like the India-Japan relationship. Now, as regards your question regarding how a Shinzo Abe is going to be viewed in history, well, you know, there were some hostilities towards him, which were particularly evidenced in China and South Korea. Uh, there was a great deal of uh, animosity which some sections of the South Korean leadership had towards uh, Shinzo Abe. And okay. this was mainly because of what they viewed as Japan's role in the Second World War. And they particularly agonized over the issue of uh, forced labor, which the Japanese army had uh, uh, indulged in. And uh, the Koreans felt that they, were, they had not been adequately compensated, although Shinzo Abe felt that he had compensated Korea. Now we come to China. China had been displaying a great deal of hostility towards Shinzo Abe because they saw in Abe somebody who was standing up to Chinese expansionism. All right. Quad itself was conceived of as, in, as an institution to check expansionism from China. All right, Mr. Dal, uh, I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I'm running Korean out of time. Uh, I want to thank you for your thoughts, your perspective, uh, and your patience indeed. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. That is uh, Mr. Prabhu Dayal uh, talking about Shinzo Abe and his contributions, uh, in fact, to not just the Indo-Japan relationship, but also redefining the Quad and the Indo-Pacific. We're getting a piece of breaking news.